All right, here's just a, a, some of what the president has said this last week. Fix health care, fix the border, but in the days that have followed, uh, a walk back of sorts. Here's what President Trump said about the border last week and last night. And if they don't stop them, we're closing the border. They'll close it, and we'll, we'll keep it closed for a long time. I'm not playing games. Well, I said I'm closed, and I really wanted to close it. But now Mexico say, no, 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 first time in decades. We will not let anybody get through. And they've apprehended over 1,000 people today. When it comes to health care, Republicans sounded the alarm, warning this could be a gift to Democrats. Dana Bash is our CNN chief political correspondent, and Dana, Good to see you. You know, we we have certainly seen this move this movie before the Trump reversal. But but the might the whiplash on health care really be a problem for him? Maybe. Um, but truthfully, every Republican I've talked to both on Capitol Hill and those who thought this was a big mistake in his orbit think that the bigger problem would have been to keep going down the road that he appeared to be going on, or at least the road that people um, on Capitol Hill thought he was going on, which is to reopen, aggressively reopen, the repeal Obamacare legislative debate uh, right now. Because they believe, politically speaking, that they could be in pretty good shape when it comes to the contrast that they could have in 2020 depending on who the Democratic nominee is, Brooke, because so many of them, the, the candidates, are all about Medicare for all. And when it comes to that choice, Republicans feel like they are in, in, much, in much better shape to have that conversation, meaning what we have now or maybe fixing what we have now versus getting rid of private insurance. Yeah. Um, and they saw what happened, particularly in the House, when they tried and failed in a very um, spectacular way to repeal and replace Obamacare legislatively, it didn't work. And Republicans felt the, the burn big time in losing the majority in the House, not just because it's not, not working, but because of Democrats getting on top of the, of the, uh, of the issue and arguing that Democrats are going to save everybody from having the pre-existing condition problem. So mm -hmm. short term, yes, political problem, but long term, they're hoping that pulling back uh, from the political brink is the best thing. Okay. How about another moment from the speech last night where the president hits former Vice President Joe Biden, who has mm -hmm. been forced to respond to some allegations that he made some women feel uncomfortable in his interactions with them. Here was the president. Our former vice president, he's — I was going to call him. I don't know him well. I was going to say, welcome to the world, Joe. You having a good time, Joe? Are you having a good time? I said, General, come here. Give me a kiss. I felt like Joe Biden. Yeah. I mean, aside from the glaring hypocrisy of all of this, to me, it's also totally making light uh, of some of these women who've come forward. Of course. Look, this is classic Donald Trump. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, it's something that people have become accustomed to. He's putting on a show. He is speaking, was last night, to a room of Republicans, of donors, trying to, you know, give him the best Trump show uh, he can. And for him, that means saying things that nobody else would or should say. And that's what that is about. Um, you know, you can see somebody like, you know, a late night talk show host saying something along those lines. But he's the president of the United States. Never mind, as you said, the irony. But that is classic Donald Trump. Uh, it is the, the, the notion of taking something that you should be, um, frankly, ashamed to talk about and trying to, and in many times with this history, successfully Mm -hmm. turning it into a political positive. And it has had his opponents, both Republicans and Democrats, scratching their heads. And I don't anticipate that to change anytime soon. Yeah, I felt that, that was foreshadowing to <laughs> what could be to come. Um, exactly. Speaking of, speaking of classic Donald Trump, during mm -hmm. the, the spray with the NATO Secretary General yesterday, the president claimed that his father was born in a very wonderful place in Germany while, mm -hmm. while discussing the, the country's military spending. But, but Fred Trump was actually born in the Bronx. He sure and, was. And that wasn't the, the first time the president said that. My father is German, right? Was German. And uh, born in a, a very wonderful 
place in Germany, and so I have a great feeling for Germany. My father's from Germany. Uh, both of my parents are from the EU. Don't forget, both of my parents were born in EU sectors, okay? I mean, my mother was Scotland, my father was Germany. So obviously we followed up with, you know, the White House. We've gotten radio silence on that. And we asked for clarity. Uh, a Trump advisor offered on background, quote, Obama thought we had 57 states. Sometimes mistakes happen. Dana. Yeah, obviously not, not the same. And this is kind of back to a version of what we were just talking about, which, which is Donald Trump, the storyteller, and just kind of says things. And sometimes when he says them so much, when he's telling a story, when he's sort of sowing a, a narrative about him or about his family, um, he doesn't tell the truth. And this is something that doesn't really make any sense because it's not like it's hard to follow up on and it doesn't get him anywhere. His father is of German descent, mm. but he wasn't, but he was born in the Bronx. I was talking to somebody uh, in Trump world before coming on with you, Brooke, yeah. who was talking about the fact that it admitted that this is the issue for Donald Trump. Not now when he doesn't have an opponent, but if he gets somebody who he is running against, who, who appears and comes across as genuinely presidential and mm. likable, it is this kind of thing that will hurt him. Not with the base who loves him, we know that, and they love hearing tales and they don't care if sure. some of the things he talks about are not accurate, but with the people he is going to need to win who didn't really care as much necessarily about these things in 2016 because they liked the idea of a disruptor and somebody different and they didn't like the idea of Hillary Clinton, that is where those kinds of moments, talking about his father being born in Germany, for no reason, it doesn't get him anywhere, it only makes him look unpresidential, that is where it's going to get him. But this person I talked to said, don't expect it to change. If it was going to change, it would have changed the day he came down that escalator almost four years ago. I don't think anyone is, but you can just hear that potential <laughs> opponent being like, Bronx, Berlin, conflating this, what else would he not, you know, Dana Bash, uh, perfectly put by you as always. Thank you very much Thanks, uh, on that. Keep scratching your head on that one, I guess. <laughs>